Look how delicious these look. Oh, I don't know what else to say now. I'm Sav and this is Lago Meats. Today we're going to be making French dip sliders. Crunchy French rolls topped with homemade roast beef, Swiss cheese, caramelized onions, and a horseradish aioli. Then we'll dip the whole sandwich in a delicious au jus. These are perfect if you have any leftover roast beef, but honestly they're so good that I'll cook up a whole roast beef just to make these sandwiches. Let's take a look at the ingredients. We're going to use a two and a half pound bottom round roast, a little bit of vegetable oil to sear it. We'll use my freshly baked French rolls, Swiss cheese, we'll caramelize an onion. For the horseradish aioli, we're gonna use half a cup of mayo, two tablespoons of white wine vinegar, two tablespoons of horseradish, a clove of garlic, a tablespoon of chopped parsley. Then for the au jus, we'll use half a cup of red wine, two cups of homemade beef stock, two tablespoons of soy sauce, and of course we're gonna use salt and pepper to season everything. Let's get cooking. All right, first things first is we want to season our beef. So it's a little wet, so we wanna take a paper towel, dry all that off so we can get a good sear on this. We want it as dry as possible. Then we're gonna season it all over with our kosher salt. Now this salt is gonna penetrate into this beef and extract all that moisture, so then we can get a really, really good sear on it. If you watched my oven tri-tip video, then I use the reverse sear method to cook the tri-tip. And we're gonna use the same exact method here. Go back and watch that video though if you wanna learn more about the reverse sear method. This is a big piece of meat, so it needs a lot of seasoning. Now ground black pepper everywhere. So I'm using a bottom round roast, but you can use pretty much any cut of beef. You can use a top sirloin, um, an eye of round, you can even use a prime rib or a tri-tip. Any kind of beef will work in this. All right, we're gonna set this aside on kind of a cooling baking rack with a pan underneath. We're gonna let it sit out for at least an hour. Let that salt extract all that moisture but it's preferable if you do this overnight, leave it uncovered in your fridge, then it'll really be able to get all that moisture out of that beef. Our beef has been sitting out for about an hour, hour and a half. There was some moisture that that salt brought up and I just blotted it off with a paper towel. We're gonna set it up with the fat cap on top because the fat cap is gonna just melt over that meat, keep it really nice and moist. Our oven has been preheating to 200 degrees. Now we're gonna put it in. It's gonna cook low and slow and then we'll take it out when a meat thermometer inserted in the thickest part of the beef registers about 110 to 115. You don't want to cook this beef to for sure not any past medium because this is a really lean piece of beef and it's going to get really dry and like stringy and just not good if it goes anything past medium. So actually it's a lot better if it's cooked more on the rare side, which is what we're going to do today. Our beef was in the oven for about two hours. The meat thermometer registered 115 degrees. So we're gonna let this rest for about 15 to 20 minutes. It's gonna continue to cook in the inside and the temperature is gonna come up 10 to 15 degrees. So our final temp will be 125 to 130, which is perfect for rare to kind of medium rare. Okay, it's been resting for 20 minutes. We are gonna sear it off now. So turn on your stove to medium high. Our pan is hot, let's add Couple tablespoons of our oil. Use a neutral oil here, something with a high smoke point so you can get this pan really hot. All right, let's let that heat up a little bit. Okay, let's put in our beef. Look at that delicious sear on that. Nice and golden brown. Get the other side, just like a minute or so. Make sure you get all the sides. All right, let's 
take this out. Look how beautiful that is. Nice sear on it. If you wanted to eat roast beef on its own, you could slice into this now and eat it by itself. But since we're gonna cut it really thin for our sandwiches, it's easier to cut that way if it's cold. So we're gonna let this cool down a little bit for about 30 minutes. We'll wrap it up, put it in the fridge, and chill it for a few hours. So while our beef is cooling, we're gonna make our au jus. We're gonna use this kind of dirty pan. It's got a little bit of the meat fond. All right, deglaze your pan with half a cup of red wine. Get all that meat fond off. Now we're gonna add our two cups of beef stock. Bring that up to a simmer. Our au jus is now simmering. We're gonna let this reduce by about half. So we want like about a cup of this au jus. So just let it simmer on your stove for probably like 15-ish minutes. While our sauce is reducing on the stove top behind us, let's make our horseradish aioli. I'm gonna take half a cup of mayo. Ooh, that sounded interesting. We're gonna add two tablespoons of white wine vinegar. Give that a little stir. Two tablespoons of our horseradish. Depending on how hot you like it, if you don't like it super hot and horseradishy, then put in less. If you like it more, put in more, it's up to you. Keep that open just in case we need to add more. We are though gonna put this in the fridge for a few hours and let the flavors meld. So don't put in too much because it does get stronger after a few hours. Let's mince up our garlic using my favorite microplane. Get all that deliciousness off. Let's add in our parsley. Get up the stir. Let's add a little bit of salt and our pepper. Mix it up. And now let's give it a little taste. It's actually pretty good. Really good, actually. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna leave it like that. We're gonna cover it with some saran wrap, put it in the fridge with our roast beef, and let the flavors all meld together. Our sauce has reduced by half, so we are gonna add our soy sauce. It's about two tablespoons. Give that a stir, let's taste it. Make sure you're adding unsalted stock to this. I mean, I always use unsalted stock because you can always add in more salt. But for this, it's reducing, that flavor's gonna concentrate, and then you add in the soy sauce, which is really salty already. So if you added the salted stock, it's gonna be really salty, way too salty. So remember, you can always add salt. This is perfect. Our beef is gonna be coming out of the fridge in a little bit, so let's start our caramelized onions. We'll slice up our onion. Onions are sliced. Let's heat up our stove. Turn around like medium high. Let's add our oil. Just about one to two tablespoons. Let that heat up a bit. Let's add in our onions. And you want them as far apart as possible. It's a lot though, so it's not gonna be possible in the beginning. But as you caramelize them, they're gonna like get really, really small, honestly. Okay, so we're gonna let them saute for a few minutes without touching them. You may wanna turn down your heat a little bit because you don't want them to burn. Let's give them a little stir. So we can get the other side. This is gonna take about 
30 minutes to an hour, so be patient, take your time, don't rush them by turning up the heat. Our onions have been sauteing for about 10 minutes. The pan is looking a little dry though, so I'm gonna add a little bit of water. So prevent them from sticking and burning. Put that in a little bit. Also at this point, we're gonna add some salt. Now continue to cook them at medium low, probably for another like 20, 30 minutes. Okay, let's take a look at our onions. They have been sauteing now for about 35 minutes. We're gonna add just a splash of red wine to deglaze the pan. It's gonna add some good flavor in there too. on bits and we'll let this simmer for about a minute to get all that alcohol out. Okay, let's put a little ground back black pepper, give it a little stir. We'll set these aside in the pan and keep them warm while we assemble our sandwiches. Our beef has been in the fridge for a few hours. It's all chilled so it's going to be easier to cut. Get that red center perfectly cooked. Delicious on our sandwiches. Let's assemble our sandwiches. So we'll cut our rolls. This is my um, quick no need bread, except obviously instead of making a full loaf, I made them into little, little slider buns. Layer your delicious roast beef on there. More beef the better, right? We'll put a piece of cheese. Let's put our caramelized onions on there. That's gonna be good. And then finish it off with our horseradish aioli. Our oven is preheating to 350 right now because we're gonna throw these in the oven for about 10 minutes so the cheese can get all melty. And... All right, we're gonna brush these with a little bit of melted butter. And set these on a little baking rack. Let's do the others. All right, we're gonna put these in the oven for 10 minutes. Look how delicious these look. Oh my gosh. All that melty cheese, that beef. We warmed up our au jus a little bit. Let's pour it in a bowl. Let's take a bite. I'm ready. Let's cut into this thing. Crispy that bun is. A lot of times people use Hawaiian rolls for these sandwiches, but I like a crunchy bun on top because you're dipping it in the sauce. It's gonna get all soggy if you don't use a crunchy bun. There we go. All right. Look at how delicious that is. We're gonna dip that in that sauce too. All right, ready? Let's do it. These are good. It's cheesy, got that tender beef, a little kick from the horseradish, and that umami taste in the sauce. Oh, gotta have another bite. A little crunch from the bun. They're very messy, obviously. Oh my gosh. Oops. I hope you guys enjoyed my French dip sliders. The full recipe can be found on my food blog at lagameats.com. I've got new delicious dishes coming out every Thursday, so hit a like and subscribe below. I'll see you next time. Hey, do.